Okay, uh, this was just a, a really short vid I wanted to show here. Um, what, I, what I'm kind of concerned about is how, what, why I'm getting this, uh, it seems to be a lot of current coming from my back EMF. Um, and making my diodes that I'm cat that I was capturing on this board uh, get actually pretty warm. Um, so I just wanted to put the diode here. Let me pull this out. You can see this is definitely a diode, and the cathode here is on the left. Uh, I get these out of I do uh, car amplifier repairs, so I, I take some parts out of there to use for some of this stuff. Um, so what I got is I got the diode across the coil as if uh, you're trying to just dump the back EMF uh, back through the coil so it doesn't go throughout the circuit. Um, right now, it's cold. Uh, we're going to bring the reed in. Let's just give it a little spin. Let this thing spin up. This is just with the one coil. She won't get the high speed that she was getting with the three coils. But the reed, it's nice and clean. It's not getting any sparking at all. So all the back EMF is being dumped into this diode, back into the coil. And she's warm already. Uh, that's a lot of current coming back out of there. Um, let's see if I get it going a little faster. These reeds, they're big, and they have uh, they have resonant spots, uh, points, and uh, rotor seems to uh, go into uh, upper RPMs in little jumps. Yeah, she's hot. The diode is hot. Now, if the diode was shorted, uh, this wouldn't be working. The diode is directly across the coil. It's the new wire here. Um, and there's no sparking. If I take the diode out, you can see my reed. Uh, come on. There you go. But, uh... You see the sparking on the reed because the back EMF is jumping back across the reed. But man, that's a lot. I can't use little diodes on this, you know, with these big coils. There's a lot of current coming out from the reverse EMF. But it's just something I wanted to show. I mean, I really can't show you the temperature here. I, I have to. I'm gonna have to get like a temperature gauge, but. This thing's getting almost as hot as the 5 ohm resistor that I had on before. And I just want to see if anybody had any comments on that and if they've had this experience with the back EMF and so much current coming back out. If anybody has any comments, uh, let me know. Shut her down. Alright. It's uh, time to go to bed. Uh, I'm going to do some videos tomorrow uh, I've been I promised to do some tests on these coils that I made uh, they're nicely wound this is a bifiler coil and I've already done the tests and then this is one on a platform this is just a straight coil just two wires coming off of it and I'm going to do a comparison test to see uh, have it drive the rotor um, and see if there's a difference in, in these bifiler coils versus a regular coil. I'm sort of convinced that the bifiler has something to do with some, uh, there's not really a lot of answers out there as to the advantages of a bifiler coil um, when you're using them here anyway. I think they're more for a high frequency thing. Um, but we'll give it a try and uh, I've already tried it. We're, we're going to show uh, what kind of back EMF it comes off of it, what kind of speed we get off the rotor versus uh, this coil and the other one. And uh, see, just to show my findings, 
and I really don't see a difference. Um, Tesla claims that on this on this bifiler coil that uh, when you run in to the first one, which is every other winding till it gets to the end, then you take that end and bring it to the end on the other coil that's going, you know, every other one to the end. That if if you had uh, 100 volts across the whole thing, that by the time the first coil comes through and then starts over here, that you'd have a 50 volt difference between the the wires. Uh, wrapped or, or the coils uh, next to each other uh, I, I don't really understand what that means um, it must be something that has to do with high frequency high voltage which I'm not really dealing with here but uh, it's, it was an interesting uh, thing to play I've tried a lot of different things to try to see if there's any advantage to these and I, I'm just not seeing it um, as in uh, any magic or anything like that but uh, we will show this tomorrow and then I also have a new transformer here uh, we're going to use our primary in the center and then this coil here uh, it starts here comes in and then on the inside it's going to jump here and then across to the next one and I'm, I'm having an idea that maybe if my primary takes on uh, some pulses that instead of radiating outwards towards another coil where they'd be wrapped on top of another that maybe when it creates its its magnetic field that uh, maybe it'll generate more power uh, through the secondary uh, just from something that I've read, it's just something I'm going to try. Um, there's 10 windings in the middle, and there's 10 windings here and 10 windings here. So if it does amplify power, um, I should get twice as much voltage and current on these. But I'm not sure. We're going to give it a shot. I'll do that when I do uh, my videos of the bifiler coils. I also have, I don't have it here. I don't know where I put it. Maybe Kitty took it. Um, I'm going to have to find it. Uh, a pancake coil that I'll do a little demonstration on whether it has any uh, drag effects when shorted. Uh, I don't see much use in those coils either. Um, but we're going to show them tomorrow. Alright, thanks guys.